VGC, singles, Nuzlocke challenges, you know what they all have in common? Wolfie Glick has played every version of it. Oh wait, no, that's not it. What they all have in common is that the moves that you choose for every single Pokemon matters so, so much. From choosing between Flamethrower and Fire Blast to even drastic options like going for Stone Age over Rock Slide, each move that you choose for your Pokemon can easily impact the game state by a lot. That's because RNG is such a huge factor of Pokemon gameplay, and that top players like Wolfie Glick on the competitive side and Pichal on the Nuzlocking side take a lot of time to come up with teams and their respective movesets. So should you play it safe by going for Thunderbolt, which is a slightly weaker move that rarely lets you down because of its high accuracy, or should you risk it all with a move like Thunder with its immense high power? Power and accuracy shape how we approach battles, influencing not only our choices but also the identity of Pokemons themselves. But before we continue, I want to hear from you guys. How do you guys determine whether to use a hard-hitting move or to use a consistent move? Comment down in the comment section below. From the beginning of time, the trade-off between power and accuracy has been a defining mechanic of battle strategy. In Pokemon Red and Blue, Game Freak introduced moves like Thunder and Fire Blast, which were powerful attacks with high damage potential but god awful accuracy. So, do we go for weaker moves for consistency or gamble for that sweet, sweet damage? Most elemental moves that were released at the time had a consistent option and a high risk option and they were mostly available in the form of technical machines or hidden machines. Fire Blast and Flamethrower, Thunder and Thunderbolt, Ice Beam and Blizzard, they were all PMs. Early on in the generations, there really wasn't much to think about since there wasn't a lot of diversity in movesets. Were you gonna go for Hyper Beam which had 90% accuracy or Body Slam which had 100% accuracy? Trick question, Taurus and Snorlax ran both! There really wasn't a huge reason to weigh in on accuracy since you could easily opt for both power and accuracy while flagship Pokemons like Tauros didn't have the opportunity to choose since it could only realistically learn Fire Blast and not its weaker counterpart, Flamethrower. Which is honestly really weird if you ask me because I don't understand why a bull can learn Fire Blast and not Flamethrower. Why the series progressed, Game Freak refined the mechanics of power and accuracy. Generation 2 introduced items like Bright Powder, White Lands. Generation 3 gave us weather statuses where certain weather related moves had their accuracy modified based on the weather. Generation 4 gave us abilities like No Guard as well as consumable items like the Mickleberry. So, how do we decide which option to go for? Consistency or risk? Wait, math? In my Pokemon game? Unfortunately, I'm a nerd. So, when thinking about a logical answer to this question, we probably have to answer mathematically what the most logical option is. To determine how much probable output a move has, it's actually not as complicated as you think it is. The RNG factor here is the accuracy of the move. So let's take for example Hydro Pump in Generation 9. At a base power of 110, it clocks in at 80% accuracy. So if you multiply both together, you get a consistent power output of 88 base. Compare that it to its counterpart itself with a base power of 90 and 100% accuracy, its consistent power output is 90 base. Mathematically, Surf appears superior for consistent damage. But before you go right on ahead and use this calculation for every move in the game, it's really important to remember that in a battle, context really matters because the difference between a KO can be as simple as 5 base power. So now that the map has shown that lower accuracy moves with higher power may not necessarily mean that they are better, how do we then apply them to our movesets? Much like the corporate world, Pokemon have their roles within teams as well. Pokemon like Araconid, which recently, as of writing this video, went up from Smogons and U2 OU tier, which is a staggering glow up. This was because it excelled at its role of being an anti-physical tank while being able to set up sticky webs effortlessly. On sets like these, they primarily utilize Surf as its accuracy means it's a highly consistent way to chip away at the opponent without risking a miss. On the flip side, you've got hyper consistent offensive threats like Dragapult, who can easily run a choice pack set and drop high power nukes like Drago Meteor onto unsuspecting switch -in. Since the purpose is just to nuke the opponent on the switch -in, this means that opting for high power, high risk moves like Draco Meteor over Dragon Pulse became fundamental to its role. In competitive play, formats like VGC and Smogon are often defined by precise calculations. 
calculate the risk, and by subscribing if you like the content. Players often go full sweat mode and do high level damage calculations in an attempt to figure out what the best options are for them at that point. I kid you not, high level players actually memorize the damage counts, the numbers that are applied so that they can best make their decisions from there. This makes it such that a lot of players want as much consistency as they can afford within such scenarios since nobody would want to risk a low accuracy move in a high stakes situation, right? There are some moves where generally there really isn't much general alternatives for them. Moves like Focus Blast have no real alternative since Aura Sphere has very little distribution and Stone Age realistically only has Rock Slide which is also not 100% accurate. Even in single player strategies, the power versus accuracy trade-off is a key element of strategy. Especially if you are playing a self-imposed set of rules like in an Aslock. One of my favorite examples is the HGSS Claire battle where she carries a Dragonite with Fire Blast and Kingdra with Hydro Pump. Both Pokemon just have the ability to obliterate your team if you are underprepared and sometimes you have to fish for the miss in order to proceed. The psychological impact of power versus accuracy is also often underestimated. Missing a key attack in a crucial moment can be extremely devastating, especially when you're already in the position to win and then you miss. On the flip side, landing a high powered move like Blizzard or Thunder when weather is no longer a factor can feel incredibly rewarding. This psychological dynamic influences how players approach battles. Some players might shy away from high-risk moves after a string of misses, while others may, you know, just gamble. This balance between confidence and caution adds an additional layer to the trade-off, making every battle different and unique. Over the generation, Game Freak identified this and of course, introduced various tools to help reduce the risk of low accuracy moves. Generation 4, Machamp got no guard, an ability that ensures every move used by Machamp and on Machamp hits no matter what. This meant that Machamp was able to fire off 100% accurate dynamic punches, which eventually led to its ban from DPP-OU almost 17 years later. Yes, it just got banned a while ago. Abilities like Compound Eyes increase the accuracy of moves by multiplying the original accuracy by a factor of 1.3, which means Compound Eyes Galvantula can fire off Thunder at 91% accuracy as opposed to the usual 70% which actually was a huge selling point for Galvantula in Generation 6, where weather was nerfed to 5 turns. On top of that, you have abilities like Sand Veil and Snow Cloak, which reduce the accuracy of moves by 20% when in their respective weathers, and with that alone, resulted in a blanket ban on those abilities, causing mons like Cacturn and Frostless to be banned by virtue of them having only those abilities in their respective generations. Of course, abilities weren't the only factor that improved accuracies. If you were a crazy person like me, you would know that the move Gravity exists. It not only improved accuracy of moves by 5 thirds, but also grounded all Pokemon, just saying. Which meant you could fire off Earthquake onto mons like Skarmory. And yes, Gravity's Swords Dance Landra's Therion was indeed one of my favorite fun sets to run on the ladder. Items like Mickleberry, Zoom Lens, and White Lens also helped to boost the accuracy of moves, but due to them having such a lackluster effect compared to other items like Life Orb or Choice Packs, which gave immediate power to the Pokemon, they were considerably underexplored due to them just not being good enough to be used. At its core, the trade-off between power and accuracy represents the essence of Pokemon battles, strategy, risk, reward, and immense gambling at times. It challenges players to think critically during team building, adapting to their opponents mid-battle, and do a butt ton of calculations. Let me leave you with a quote that I live by to end things off. Any move that has less than 99% accuracy will miss 100% of the time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am actually streaming right now. I have started streaming. So if you guys like what you see, please leave a like down in the comment. Wait, that doesn't make sense. If you guys like what you see, feel free to hit the subscribe button and you know, maybe you guys will see more of me in the next few videos. Bye! Oh yeah, wait. Click on this video. I'm pretty sure YouTube thinks that you like it, so go for it. Ciao!